Let's go. It is February the 20th, 2018. News broke today that the Bucks released a couple of players. One I could give a flip about, and the other I could. So we'll talk about the one that I could first, which is Doug Martin. Obviously, I guess, you know, from a from a fan standpoint, I really like the guy. Thought he was a good guy. When you heard other players, you know, talk about him, generally it was always in a good light. People obviously like Doug Martin. He was a good guy, but being a good guy is not really what matters. And when you combine not putting up numbers with the issues he was battling, generally doesn't work out too well. So six years with Tampa, very inconsistent. Do I put that all on Doug Martin? I certainly don't. A lot of this has got to be put on the offensive line. I mean, when you look at last year and when you see what they did, you know, I, I really, I thought with them moving Ali Marpet over to center and J.R. Sweezy coming back from his injury, I really thought that there was some potential there that the offensive line could really turn it around real quick because I was drinking the Kool-Aid. I was really drinking the Kool-Aid when I heard this you know, this team, when I heard the coach, the general manager, when I heard them talking about the potential, you know, what this, when I, you potential, right? Remember that word. But when I heard that the potential was there for this offensive line to be really good and that that's why they didn't really address it in the draft. And I thought, you know, with the addition of OJ Howard and, and yeah, he's not an offensive lineman, but he's that old school tight end. And not that he can't catch the ball and run, because he certainly can, which is what made him a first-round pick. But the fact that he can block, the fact that he's a big body, the fact that he's from Alabama, he understands that that game. I thought that that with J.R. Sweezy, with Ali Marpet moving to center, I thought that these things were going to be the things that would give us the the possibility of having a quick turnaround on this offensive line and, and really kind of getting us going. So it is a little bit disappointing because obviously the offensive line did not produce. And I don't care who you put back there at running back. If your offensive line is garbage, if they're not doing their job, and I mean, maybe garbage is a strong word, but if your offensive line isn't performing, you're not going to run the ball well. You're not going to throw the ball well. You're just not going to produce. It, it all starts in the trenches. So Doug Martin, I wish him the best of luck. I really do. I hope he succeeds wherever he goes. I hope he finds a team with a great offensive line, with a good coach, people around him that will support him, be there for him, and be a positive influence on him because he's going to need the right people around him. When you battle addiction when you battle things in your life it's important you have people surrounded around you that that are willing to grind with you and and to support you and to be there for you and be a positive influence is key so i'm hoping he keeps his focus right and he stays on the right track and and really moves forward just as a as a individual as a human being forget the football aspect although i do wish him the best there as well so Chris Baker, obviously, he was released as well. Now, Chris Baker, I could probably make a whole video on Chris Baker. I, like many Buck fans, had high hopes for Chris Baker. I really wanted to see this guy succeed. I thought that him and Gerald McCoy, that we might be able to get this thing rolling with Spence on the outside, and I was like, you know what? This defensive line is going to be legit. This is where it's at, man. He's coming over here with Deshaun. They're going to bring that swagger. But it just didn't pan out for whatever reason. And let me tell you something right now. This GM and the coach, whether he likes it or not, they ride or die with Jameis Winston right now, okay? The owners, the GM, the coach, they done went all in. 
regardless of what people think of Jameis Winston, whether they like him or they don't like him, I've I've told you I'm a huge fanboy. I love Jameis Winston. But regardless of how people feel, they they're riding out with Jameis Winston. And when the season was winding down and Jameis Winston has an altercation with Chris Baker, the Bucks are gonna go on the side of Jameis Winston, not on Chris Baker. I can guarantee you that much. Now, I'm not saying that's completely the reason why here, but I'm just saying he ain't winning that fight. They paid him. They brought him in. He was supposed to do big things. At the end of the day, he ain't show up. I personally think he was just more talk than anything. But that's just my opinion. Again, I'm on the outside looking in here, so I don't really know. But nevertheless, it is what it is, and uh, it was very disappointing. So I hope, I hope wherever he goes, he does well. I hope you know he does good. But but it was it, it just wasn't meant to be here in Tampa. Um. Now I'm not gonna lie. From what I've seen, it looks like Deshaun Jackson, he ain't going nowhere. Like He's going to stay. But I wouldn't be shocked if the Bucks let him go, too. I really wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked if he ended up being let go, going back to Philadelphia, going somewhere else. I don't know. Um, it wouldn't shock me one bit if that were to happen. And, and the main reason isn't necessarily Deshaun Jackson. It's more so addition by subtraction. And then looking at that rookie from last year, that guy from Penn State, that guy, I ain't got to say his name. He showed up. He showed up. Chris Godwin, I know it was the end of the season, but Chris Godwin looked pretty legit. And I like Chris Godwin a lot. I think that when Chris Godwin was on the field with Mike Evans, that that combination with Humphreys, with O.J. Howard, that crew was a better tandem than when Deshaun Jackson is out there. Part of that is because Jameis Winston's not hitting the deep ball. He just isn't. And I think that Godwin provides a little bit more flexibility underneath and in a mid-range game than Deshaun Jackson does. Chris Godwin is a heck of a route runner. And that's not taking anything away from Deshaun. But I just, I, when you watch Deshaun and Mike Evans, they're two alpha males. They want the ball. Chris Godwin is more just, hey, I'm going to do whatever it takes for the team. He's young. He's hungry. It wouldn't shock me if Deshaun if Deshaun was gone. It really wouldn't. But that's just my thought. Nevertheless, it's the off season. This is a Bucks fan time of year. This is when <laughs> this is when we start drinking a Kool Aid because we're gonna start hearing about all this nonsense about oh this guy is gonna be this and this guy is gonna be that and then we're gonna get to the draft and and that's how it is being a Bucks fan. You know, it, it seems like it's every single year. Last year it was Deshaun and Chris Baker, man. I mean, it was that was it, man. Our defense is gonna be legit. Our offense is gonna be legit. I mean, Good Morning Football it wouldn't shut up talking about us. We are gonna be the the team. I'm hoping that it's a one year delay like it was with Jacksonville, because Jacksonville they said a lot of great things about them, and then they were garbage the year before, and then the following year, last year, was when they really stepped up. So we'll see. Nevertheless, I may chime back in in a little while. I'm waiting on my daughter, and it looks like she's coming out now. So I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep moving forward. I'm always going to show the process, and I'll talk to you all later. I'm out.